Para la siguiente charla, esta es en inglés y tenemos el placer y el honor de tener a Wendy como ponente, que nos va a contar su experiencia montando a una, empre una empresa en Holanda sobre cómo, cómo tener o cómo montar una empresa que sea sostenible pero con clientes de presupuestos pequeños. I would like to introduce Wendy. She's a friend since a lot of years ago. I've been with her, you know, I've, I met her at work in Europe a lot of years ago and she's a very active member of the WordPress community. Uh, she's going to talk today about her experience with her company, you know, having a sustainable company with low budget clients. And I don't know how to pronounce your last name, sorry. That's it. <laughs> and I don't know how to pronounce your Twitter either. Extremely happy. So if you want to mention her on Twitter about her talk, Dolge Lukic <laughs> in Spanish. Thank you very much, Wendy. Welcome. Si alguien de sonido puede bajar a arreglarle el micrófono o si no le doy el de mano, ¿vale? Vale, gracias. Ok. Ok, so you can hear me better now if that's ok, and in the back you can hear me as well. So the live stream can hear me as well. Um, hello, live stream. Um, today I... Ok, everybody is clear in this room that my talk is going to be in English, right? Right, you all understand English. Okay, so um, my talk today is going to be um, how to build a sustainable business serving low-budget customers. And um, uh, before I start talking about this, I want to tell you what the build-up of my talk is. Um, these are the things I'm going to work through, and that should be 30 minutes. And by the end of it, you should know what I did, and hopefully you'll be inspired to Um, use some of the tools and the tactics I used to use in your own business. So before I start, how many of you are actually business owners? Oh, that is so many. Good, good, good. And how many of you have clients that tell you they don't have any money for a website? Right, so the problem uh, is quite relatable, right? So before I start my story, I want to ask you to take a minute and ask yourself, why am I here? Because the question serving low budget customers um, might be something that can uh, have, give you a bad taste in your mouth because it might, um, you might think that you want to get people to give you money that they don't have. So I wrote a disclaimer before I start to tell you that this is not about that. I am not going to tell you how to get people to give you money they don't have because that is not okay. Okay? Um, this is not about a get rich scheme, about people falling for beautiful talks You tell them, they give you money, and they end up with nothing. This is not about that. And also, this is not the answer to all the questions you might have about why you don't have any money. Okay, if you were expecting to get one of these questions answered, this is the moment to go away. <laughs> Nobody? Cool. Okay. So this is me. Um, I am the owner of two companies. I come from the Netherlands, which is a very tiny company, a little north above France. Um, and my one company is called the Website Club, with, with which I build websites. Um, it's a singlepreneurship, so I am the owner. I am the only person who works in it, um, and I work as a freelancer. The um, other company is called the Love Doctor. It's with the red nurse logo and what we do is we do training to pe to teach people I'm 
I'm going to try this again. We do a training to teach people about how to build healthy relationships. And it is not like dating something, but it's work relationships. So how do you healthily, in a healthy way, work with your coworkers, your boss, people who work underneath you, customers? Um, I put some pictures up. I am also a mom. You see the little angel in front? That is my daughter. She is now 18. You see the next picture. She doesn't want to be in the photos anymore. As Rothio said, I am very active in the WordPress community in the Netherlands and in WordCamp Europe. I've been an organizer. I've been a volunteer. I've been an MC. Haven't been a speaker yet. If anybody from the WordCamp Europe team is listening, I would love to be a speaker. Um, and I am the proud owner of a small dog which is taking over my house. Um, okay, so this is about me, and I want to tell you about the journey I had with my website club company, because that is what this story is about. Um, I started out in 2010, I got fired, I had a job, I was a project manager at the library in my town, and I got fired because the budget of the library got cut, so they didn't have any money for me left. Um, I started working on for myself as a freelancer. I thought I was going to be a project, project manager, but apparently there are like a gazillion project managers in the Netherlands. So nobody was actually waiting for me and nobody really wanted me. So I had no work and people were asking me about my experience with the internet and building websites because that's what I did for fun. So I started building websites for people and that went quite nice actually. The first website I built, I charged 320 euros, um, which I thought was like an amazing big chunk of money. But I worked on it for s about three to four weeks. I did nothing else. So at the end of the month, I had 320 euros to pay all my bills. And I don't know how the rates are in Spain, but with 320 euros, I can't pay my rent and my electrics and my internet and have food on the table. It's just not doable. So I started my company, I started working, and I thought, okay, I don't have enough money. I need to work more. Work, 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 more, 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 more customers. And because I was working with people that needed my help, I thought they needed my help, they told me they needed my help. Uh, but they didn't have any money. I was really kind of scared to charge a lot. And it ended up with me being bankrupt, almost burnt out, with no money, and a kid, and a lot of customers who were paying me a little money. So I thought about it, and I thought, okay, so people tell, told me I need to work on big, bigger projects, because bigger projects have bigger budgets. You'll be part of a team, you'll be working in a marketing team, you'll be uh, working with a content creator and a photographer and SEO person. And um, So I did that and it worked. I earned more money, the, the projects were bigger, I had to work, well, a little less, but I earned more money, I made a living, but I was so unhappy. I hated working in a team. I really, really hated it. So that was not the answer for me. So I decided I need to change this. I need to find a way where I can do what I want and make money and pay my bills. Um, well, I am not really a team player. I know it's really not cool, but I really like doing my own thing. And when you're in a team, you can't do that. So. I kind of clashed with the teams. Maybe I, I will. Maybe you're right. But <laughs> it's a good thing to consider. But I did something else. And I will share that with you. Okay, so it ended up for me coming to the conclusion that helping the people I liked and making money were like, it's one or the other. I could be helping people or I could be making the money, but I can't do both at the same time. And that, in my brain, made like a disconnection because I thought this should not be, this is not right. It should be possible to do both. So what did I do to, uh, so what I did to figure it out, I started doing a course. 
I enrolled in WP Elevation. Has anybody ever heard of WP Elevation? Yeah. Um, it's a course and they teach you to improve your workflow and business practices. It's specifically for people that work in the WordPress business. And they have a blueprint and it's six weeks and in six weeks you will learn all kinds of processes and all kinds of tools you can use to get your clients through your business qu more quickly and to have a better workflow. Basically that's what they did. And I also enrolled at the same time in Fizzle. Has anybody ever heard of Fizzle? Fizzle is a, a small American company. Um, WP Elevation is Australian. So Fizzle is a small, well it's not small anymore, but it's an American company and they say that they, they offer courses and it's evergreen so you can do whatever cost, course you want at any time. And they, the thing they say is earn a living doing something that you care about. So this really, this tagline really spoke to me because that is what I wanted. I wanted to earn a living doing something that I care about. If you're interested, Fizzle has a some amazing free podcast you can listen to. They have like more than 300 episodes. Um, so you can just get a taste of what they offer. And what I worked out between the two courses is that there are, there are three questions I need to answer to get this problem solved. I need to know why do I do what I do? How much money do I actually need? Because I was just guessing and I was figuring if the base would the, bill, the bills were not paid, I wasn't earning enough, but I didn't really know how much I actually needed, so that was a thing. And the last thing was, how do I bring these two together? So, <laughs> why do I do what I do? Has any of you ever asked yourself that question, especially the entrepreneurs? Why do you do what you do? It's one of the most important questions and if you have it answered and if you have it answered correctly, that it helps you make choices so much easier because you can always check with yourself whenever something comes up, is this helping my why? So for me, it was very difficult because I was like, yeah, I wanna make a living and I wanna support my family. I wanna take a trip every now and then. I want to help people, people I like, and I want to make websites because that's kind of fun. So I kind of got stuck and then I found Marie Forleo's Marie TV. I don't know if you have heard of it, but if you haven't, check it because it's very inspiring. Marie TV and she said, if you don't know what you want, if you don't know what your passion is, do this exercise. And it was this exercise. Wouldn't it be cool if, and then answer it, and then three times answer why is that important to me and you do this seven days in a row for 15 minutes just keep writing keep writing so I did that because I wanted the answer and I was desperate for money and answers and I the other thing was I could get a job but I actually didn't want that as well so I did this and for me this was the outcome the things that are most important to me. I want to take care of my family. I'm a single mother. I am like the only one bringing in money. So that was my first priority. I want to make enough money so that the bills are paid and we, me and my daughter don't have to go and live in a box. If I can make my business any way I want, I, work to, I want to work with people that need my help and that I like because there are a lot of people that need my help and there are a lot of people I don't like, but if I get to choose, I wanna work with people that I do like and people that need help because if they don't want my help, I am like totally useless and my energy is totally wasted. I wanna have a healthy work-life balance because I got totally off track with doing only work and I want to live playfully. Um, to get this going in my life, I started with the last. I started playing. I took a golf course just because I wanted to do something that was fun to me. Just something totally useless because my life had been a struggle for so many years and I was so tired and I just wanted to have some fun. So my advice to you is whenever you feel like you're struggling, which entrepreneurs, singlepreneurs, I know you are, 
life can be hard when you are responsible, when you are solely responsible for bringing in the income, find something that is just for fun because it helps. It makes it all the rest, it makes it easier. So I started there and I started playing golf and I didn't think I would like it, but I love it. I still do it. Um, and then I started looking at my work-life balance. So um, how many of you have ever written down how they spend their time, like in a normal day? A couple of hands. You should try it and then try like three or five days in a row. You'd be surprised because I thought I spent most of my time working. Well, in fact, I did, but I also spent like three to five hours a day just randomly scrolling social media, which is not helpful if you feel pressured already. Um, so I did two things. I decided, okay, what are the things I wanna, sp I wanna spend my time on? And what are the things that I'm spending my time on that I don't wanna spend my time on? So the things I want to do is, again, spend time with my family, have some fun, do some work, uh, be with friends, and also do some caregiving jobs that need to be done. Um, so I, I took a good look. I just, I just, the tools I use are pens and papers and lists. I just created lists. And then I wanted to support my family. So I had to calculate what do I need to support my family. It's a number. It's just a set number. And um, Nilo was talking about minimal viable product, the people who were here in the previous talk. Well, the minimal viable income is like that, except it's about the money that, get, that goes to you. So how much do you need, what minimum do you need to just get through the month? And it's really easy calculation. It's just how much expenses do you have? It's really simple. It's rent, it's electric, it's water, it's gas, it's uh, the internet, it's the phone, it's whatever you, wh whatever things you have to pay every month. And food, right? Don't forget the food because I calculated it and I was like, this is a really low number. And then <laughs> I thought, oh, I need to eat as well. Um, so you have your minimal viable income, which is the amount you need to pay yourself to pay your bills and, and eat. Um, and you add that, you add your business expenses to it and the taxes you need to pay. Um, for the first few years, I forgot to pay my taxes, which was very expensive in the years after that because the taxes will come and get you. So calculate them in as well. And then you get a number. I chose a random number. Um, and that is what you have to bring in a month. And when I looked at my number, which is my random number, um, when I looked at my number, I was like 3,000 euros a month. How am I going to do that? Because I, wasn't, I didn't know how to price my products. I, I was just doing something. What I just, I guessed it, and that's what I did. So to get it, to make it easier for myself, I broke it down into little bits. If I want to make 3,000 euros a month and I have there, these numbers like 160 working hours a month and 50% billable hours, those are just known facts. I got them off the internet and with my registration it seems that it's quite correct in some weeks and some weeks it's not, but average it's quite okay. So if I need to make, is there a light? If I need to make 3,000 euros and I have 80 hours per month, I need to make at least 37.50 per hour. And 3,000 euros was like a huge amount for me, but 37.50 was like, I can do that. I can make that. The same with the other two numbers. So it made it, for me, it made it much easier to grasp the numbers and to think, I can do this. I can get this money. All right. So the last thing I wanted to do is I want to work with people I like. So I call them lovely customers. In my story, it's a her because I ended up working mostly with women. It doesn't mean that it has to be a 
lady, but in my story it is. So my lovely customers, I needed, um, I wanted to work with people I like. So to get to that point, I needed to find out what kind of people do I like. So what I did, I looked at customers I already had and picked the ones I liked most. The ones that were never a burden, the ones that when they called, I actually picked up the phone and was not like, oh my God, you again, no, I'm not here. And the ones that, that listened to me and did what I told them to. Um, so I checked those and there were some things they had in common. They were singlepreneurs, so they worked alone. They rented themselves by the hour to companies. Um, they were hands-on people, so they weren't really like, yeah, the website, yeah, 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 you do it. Or we need some graphic, yeah, 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 you, you do it. They wanted to get in the dirt and wanted to do it themselves. And they were creative people. And I put the blah, 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 because in the end, after making my list, I was like, this is not what it's about. This is not, this, th these are easy things to check, but this is not what it's about. And it came down for me to this. My lovely customer is somebody I would invite into my home when they show up unannounced. And that became my single criteria. Everybody who calls me and says, I want to be your customer, and I'm like, yeah, you are never coming to my house because I'm not even giving you my address, I send them to someone else. So um, this is quite important to me, and it is a very strong and very easy check because I can feel this in my belly. When I meet you, I know if you are one of them or not. It doesn't mean I might not, I, I'm not going to like you or I'm not going to be nice to you. I will. But this check, I will know. So for me, this was like it all came down. All the other things, well, you can check them if all the other things are true. But for me, for my business, for my customers, this was the check. Are you still with me? Cool. Okay. So, doing all this investigation, still only using paper and pens and lists, what kind of help can I offer my lovely customer who is allowed in my home anytime they ring my bell so that so they can pay me a part of my 3,000 euros or maybe a big part. But assuming that the people that come to me tell me they have low, low budgets or no budgets, um, I assume it's a part of the 3,000 euros. So that was my question I was going to work with. Okay, new investigation. Um, to get to the answer of this, I had four, I, I listed four questions that I needed to answer to get to the point. What does my lovely customer think she needs? What does she actually need? How can I align these two? So that it is helpful and affordable for her and profitable for me. Because my lovely customer, if she says she has no money, she is not a customer. Remember this, if someone comes to you and says they have no money, you say, thank you very much for thinking of me, come back when you have some money. It doesn't have to be much, but there has to be money. People that don't pay you are, your, are not your customers. They are your charity, okay? Remember that. So what can I do to be helpful and affordable to her and profitable to me? And I added um, the last question I added later because I thought, yeah, I've been doing this work for like five years. It is like insane to find total new ways because I have been paying the bills, not all of them on time, but I have been paying them. And um, I am already doing something right. So I decided to investigate that as well. So I started, what do I already do? Because I did help people. They, I did send them an invoice. They did pay me. Um, and that was basically the easy part, except for my business process was like a big blurry, like a big mess of all kinds of things I kind of did and things they were kind of, a 
could ask me and things I could kind of answer, so I had to figure out what steps are specifically in my business. Um, I will get back to that later, uh, how, I, how I broke it down. Um, so what does my lovely customer think she needs? Because the, I noticed that what someone needs and what someone thinks they need are like two totally different things. I don't know if it, how, it, how it is with you, but with me, people call me and they say, hello, Wendy, I need a website, can you help me? And um, I need a website is like a, such a big thing that I often think that's not exactly what you need and that is not like the question that you have for me. There are like a couple of questions before that and there are questions after that. I need a website is the, the big question that just containers all of them, but that is not, I could give them a website and they wouldn't be helped. Right, so she thinks she needs a website, but what she actually need, I figured it out, is Superwoman, or me, with a lot of wind. Um, what she needs is someone to break down the website process, someone to put it into little steps, someone to hold her accountable, because it's a hands-on person. She wants to write the content herself, she wants to take the photos herself, she wants to pick the images herself, but if there's no one telling her you need to have it done by the first of next month it is not getting done so she needs someone to break down the steps what it takes to, to create a website and she needs someone to be accountable to and I decided that was gonna be me so I broke it down break it down is my new thing the services I offer um, it was a big, big pile of blurry, uh, mud, whatever, and um, I broke it down to these five things. Um, when you create a website for a customer who's new to being an entrepreneur and who doesn't have much money, there are a few steps they need to take. They need to find out who they are, what their product is, and what their ideal customer is, and then you can create content based on that. Um, they need a design, you need to educate them on how to use their website because the website is worthless if you're not using it. Um, and there needs to be some maintenance done somewhere in the process. So these are the services I offer, which also for myself made it clear because when someone asks you, could you help me with social media? I'm like, uh, is that within the, that list? No, it's not. I'm sorry, I can send you to someone else who can help you, but that is not what I do. Okay, and I decided, having made all my lists, there are four areas where I could win, where I could really make big step forwards in not having so much fuss. And those were standardize, automate, outsource, and healthy boundaries. I will go through them step by step. So standardize, who here works with standardized things? Standardized emails, forms, checklists. This is a game changer. This really is all, not all, but most of my emails and most of the things I have in my company are standardized, which means I never have to think about things that need to be done because it's just a list. When someone calls me, I, hello, Wendy, I would like a website. I send them a standardized email. Hey, we had a phone call and you want a website. Here are the things you need to do before we get together first. Checklist. I have some questions about what your website needs to be about. Form. Um, when they send it back to me, which is a check, I mean, I don't have to worry about the customer calling them or if they don't send back the things, it's not my customer. So forms and checklists, and standardized emails are like magic power because first of all you get done with things so much faster you don't have to think about it you can write them in your own tone of voice whatever you like uh, I always put something funny twisty smiley thingy in it and it is already it's done so you change the name and you fill in and you send them the forms and they can get to work and the thing is people really feel helped if you send them a checklist 
they really feel helped because now they know instead of thinking I need a website where on earth am I going to start they know okay so I need to create content for the home page which is going to be the answer to the question I am blah 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 and I help blah 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 with blah 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 you have that you filled it filled in the sentence check okay next on the home page there is going to be I it's just a checklist so I created PDFs in Word um, and that is it these are mine still old uh, styling but I still use them so this is um, the standard checklist for a page I wrote down when you create a page this has got to be in it you have to use at least 300 words make paragraphs of maximum 100 words and you can actually put a check in the round circle so I have the same thing for product pages and I have the same thing for the about me page I have the same thing for images I have the same thing for blog posts I have it for everything so standardized it's a real it's also a time saver um, automate was my next step I have 10 more minutes I'm gonna speed it up a little automate was my next step um, I think we all know what automate is I created a standard WordPress installation with all the plugins I wanted all the themes I wanted and I found a hosting company that I can easily duplicate so it's just whenever someone says I need a website I press one button and it's there um, I did the same thing with my bookkeeping and maintenance um, and outsource I put it in I I didn't put it in at first but I put it in because it is really something that makes you win a lot of time and win a lot of brain space um, and this is I think this is the most important one it's the healthy boundaries because um, whenever a customer came to me and they were like yeah we need to talk and I, and I would talk with them and we would talk about the website and I was like okay they're gonna be here an hour and they stayed for two three four hours and then the work wasn't done and I thought well the work is not finished so I should finish it for them um, so I quit everything people pay for all my time so I limited the most important thing is I limited access to me you can hire me but then for every minute you spend with me you pay me that is like super clear if you want to call me it's fine you pay me and we make an appointment I decide when we get to call not you so I stopped answering my phone um, and I stopped giving my time away and I stopped giving my knowledge away except from the standardized forms and systems um, and I uh, healthy boundaries basically that was what for me one of the most important things so I freed up a lot of time from not saying yes to oh I have a really quick question can you help me with this oh I have something that needs to be changed can you help me with this um, and the answer is always no I can't I can help you but I can help you then and then and it's gonna cost you so much so um, it ended up with my services I created that most of it um, is standardized outsourced or automated and the things that I am involved in are strictly bounded so it changed my system a little bit um, because I thought that the discovery phase where people find out what what they want to offer and what the product is and what they're about could be totally standardized and optimized but it didn't work so I put in a discovery session where they spend time with me and we do it together we fill out the forms together and it creates a lot of clarity and they pay me for it what I also did because I mean how much is a website I don't know what you charge but I used to charge around a thousand fifteen hundred euros which was for many people way too much um, I cut it up in pieces so the total charge is fifteen hundred euros if you buy this package but you pay it in pieces a discovery session is 260 euros content creation you can do it by yourself so you get it for free design is like five or six hundred euros so and you decide as a customer you decide when you want to 
spend the money. So you don't have to buy this all at once. You can do a discovery session, create your content by yourself, get a website that is not designed, but WordPress websites look quite fine without explicit design, and go and work a year, make some money, and then get a designer and have your website designed. Um, so I created small blocks, small packages, and together, instead of offering one big thing, I offer small services. And the, the extra bonus of that is that people can take as long as they want for creating their content, because I'm not waiting. They pay their discovery. I really don't care if they take a week for creating their content or a year, because I can plan my own time with other customers. Okay, so I created this list and I tried it and it worked. And like I told you with the discovery, um, not everything worked. So I adjusted it and I'm still adjusting it. Um, but for now, I am easily making my minimal viable income, easily serving customers that are paying me like between 200 and 500 euros per, per, per time. Um, they are happy, I am happy, because I get to help quite a lot of people. You do need to have a big chunk of people to uh, make a living in low budget customer land. Um, but the things I learned are, and I wanna share them with you. Uh, random order, kind of, not really. Money isn't everything, but worries about it will take over your life if you don't have any. That goes for me, but that also goes for my customer. Because if they need to spend 1,500 euros on a website they don't have, that is not a relaxed place to be in. The same goes for me. If I don't have any money, then every customer who might be interested, I am gonna go after them like a crocodile smelling a, a, a piece of chicken. And that is not a healthy relationship. That is not healthy. So money isn't everything, but worries about it will take over your life if you don't have any. So make sure you take care of yourself first. That means you need to get a job to get your business going, do that. Because it has been tested again and again. It's been social studies about it. When you live in poverty, your brain does not work. You can't think about the future. You can't think about things you wanna do, you wanna grow. You, your brain works differently when you live in poverty, when you have money worries. So take care of yourself first. Money. I also noticed money is never the problem. It is like a big chunk of money, or it is that people don't know what they're spending the money on, or people don't wanna give you the money. But money is actually never the real problem. The same with me. I thought my problem was my customers weren't paying me enough, but it, that really wasn't the problem. The problem was that the systems I had and the way I worked was not serving them in a way that was profitable for me. So money is never the actual problem. Again, reminder, if someone says they have no money, they are not a customer, okay? Okay, so I did two courses which helped me very, very much, um, WP Elevation and Fizzle. Find information online. There is so much, to, to you can find so much. And you can take it and tweak it and make it your own, and you can learn from it. So you don't have to invent the wheel. Just try whatever is out there, tr see if it works for you, and if it doesn't, try something else. Because all systems work. It really does. They all work. You just have to find the right one for you. So, these are my takeaways. All systems work. Learn from others. Money is never ever the problem. Take care of yourself first. Money is never the problem and it isn't everything, the answer to everything, but worries about it will screw you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much, Wendy. There was 
enlightening. I'm sure that so many of us can take away a lot of lessons. I still, I'm still working on all this, and you are a star. Thank you so much. Now we have the uh, another break in five minutes, but if you have questions, we can stay because there's no hurry to leave the room. And also, if there's any of you that want to ask in Spanish first, and I'll translate to Wendy. So we can do it that way if you want. ¿Qué? Uh, bueno, pero eh, no quería decir que sí. Si, claro, lo digo en español, pero luego he pensado si están aquí entienden inglés. A lo mejor no no tienen ganas de hablarlo, pero claro que lo entienden o si no no estarían aquí. Pero lo digo también en español. Si queréis preguntar en español, lo podemos traducir a, a Wendy, ¿vale? Hello, Wendy. Thank you. Uh, can you share the checklist or is personal? Ah. <laughs> well, there's always Google. Um, so we need to share it. So I work in Dutch, so my all my things are in Dutch. Um, but I can, um, it's basically the Yoast checklist, the Yoast. Yoast SEO plugin, you know, you uh, when you have the plugin installed in your WordPress, they have like this checks. Do you have an image? Does it have an alt text? Do you have? Uh, it, it's basically that. And then I redesigned it a little and put my words in it, and it's in Dutch. And then I'm like, here, you have a checklist. Made it for you. <laughs> so you can you can see it in the Yoast plugin. Anybody else? Yeah, you can do it. No? In the back. Um, I have a history of having trouble saying no to clients, often because they get offended and everything. So well, welcome I welcome to the club, <laughs> yay. <laughs> so I wanted to know uh, well, when you talked about uh, what kind of clients you didn't like, you told them, you sent them away to another person, but uh, how do you deal with rejecting a client? Uh, what kind of tricks do you use so they don't get offended or? Uh, right, right. So. There are two answers to this question. First of all, I train myself in being offensive. That is like a really, really healthy and good skill to have. No, seriously, you're laughing about it. It is really, really important to be able to say no. Don't explain it. Don't excuse yourself. Just say no. And you can practice it with Like, you, like you, you can practice it with, with things that are not very important, like when someone asks you in, on the street, do you have any money? No. Don't excuse it. Don't, sorry, no, I don't have any cash on me. Blah, 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 blah. No. Just say no. So practice being offensive and saying no. That is important. Um, and the second thing is I always give them Um, a little thing to get them. I am not saying, no, I can help you and what you are asking is stupid. And I'm saying, okay, I am not the right person for you, but you can go and ask this person or maybe you can try the forums or you can try this or I always have something to help them move forward. Sorry? alternative for what they are asking of me. But the most important thing is really just practice saying no. Any more? Let's have some drink. Oh. Hi, Wendy. And once uh, you said yes to that client, how do you deal with this kind of client who says, I, I not take the create content block, but he never sends the content. I'm not doing it personally. No? Yeah, better. Okay. So you said yes to this client. Yes. Uh, and he says uh, he don't want the create content block or whatever, or right. design block. But uh, he never sends you the content. 
and yeah. you start working, you <laughs> spend these hours, no, but no. there's okay. months. Okay, so months. when my client says yes to me, they first get a checklist because they need to create content and they send it to me in a Word document or in a Google Drive document, one or the other. So I can check it if they did their homework. The next thing is that when they didn't, when they don't send me the content, I don't do any work. So they said yes, they want a website, not me. I mean, they said yes, I send them the checklist, it's homework they have to do. If they are not doing it, fine by me. If they did it, they send me, they're sending me an email. Okay, so I did all the homework. The, uh, the files are in the Google Drive. I, I picked out pictures. Um, there has been uh, profile pictures taken. Uh, I think I'm done. Can you check it? I check it, and then we make an appointment. And before that, and then when, they, when, it's not, when it's not complete or when it's not correct, I just don't start working. So, and that is also very clear. I need to have this. I need to have all the content for the home page. I need to have all the content for the About Us page. I need to have all the content for your product page or pages. And I need to have the content for your contact page. That is it, four things. And all the content is text, videos, images, everything. If it's not complete, I do not start working for you. So I don't, I don't mind how long you take because I have a lot of, the thing with, the, the, the good thing for me with working with the small chunks of, uh, of customer is like I get to do a lot of different things in my week which I really like because I only plan a week ahead and customers email me and I'm like, yeah, let's plan a date and see you next week. So it's always short term and always um, small chunks of work for me as well. I know, I have to say that I know Wendy very well and I learn from her. I'm so privileged because I keep learning from her all the time and there is a lot to learn. One thing that Wendy does that is controversial and those of you who know WP Elevation will understand is that Wendy does not take a deposit. I have been told, I have also done lots of business courses, I've done WP Elevation and what they say is do not even touch a project until the client gives you at least 50% or a third depends on the length of the project or the size. Wendy doesn't do that. And I was like, what are you crazy? That's like, you know, but she is right because she doesn't start working. She keeps the proposal really short. So you don't take a long time in sending a client a proposal, do you? No, you just stand exactly standardized. There you go. So she doesn't take, I, I spend, I, I spend so long on proposals, so I usually get charged for a proposal, which makes it much more difficult because the client goes, oh, I should charge you to give me a proposal, how that, you know. So she doesn't take any money first, which means that it gives her the freedom to not care. So now what's happened to me is that uh, about nine months ago, a client paid for the whole website, it's a small, project so he paid in advance everything I still don't have the content I'm having to help him get into the Google Analytics account I've done lots of hours of work and I still haven't built the website and I hate him and I don't want to build the website because that money is gone ages ago so I think this is and to me every day I think oh my god maybe I should do like Wendy does and not do like the other courses tell you so it's very much related to what you were saying. So do do be like Wendy basically is what I'm saying. <laughs>